Yo, what's up, guys? Just checking in really, really quickly. Trying to see what's up. Uh, today is Friday night. Hopefully, you guys are not at home just sitting around coding. Uh, I've been putting together a, a video for you guys. Uh, I'm going to say the video is going to be out on Sunday. So I'm not exactly sure if I want to tell you what the video is about, but you can actually find it on my website somewhere. So if anyone is able to find it, let me know. Uh, hello, everyone. I I'm just going to be here for a quick a hot minute. Ain't nobody gonna tell me what to do on a Friday night. It's Saturday over there. Yeah. <laughs> Hola, Adolfo. Hernandez. Hernandez. Michael La, Josh R. I don't see a lot of you guys' um, your, your screen names whenever I go on live streams because uh, maybe I'm just too lazy to go on at nighttime. You know how it is. After the clock hits 8 p.m., nobody wants to be on the computer anymore, right? Or at least we're not doing anything serious. Uh, yeah. So, what's what's going on, everybody? I don't have anything I really want to talk about for my live stream today, like <laughs> like I normally do. Uh, so I guess one question is, uh, related to Josh R's comments. So Josh R says that, uh, thanks Brian for all the hard work with LBTA tools. So you guys have probably noticed the last couple of videos, uh, put up some interesting content. Um, LBTA tools is basically how I want to advance a lot of the different series I want to put out either on the channel or like on the website. I'm kind of tired of doing all this UI shit. <laughs> I think after a while UI just becomes, uh, what is it? Tedious. It becomes a chore. Whenever I'm developing projects for clients that are actually pay me like more than a hundred dollars an hour for actual application work. Uh, I don't, I don't go through all this boring UI code. I just use these libraries, make the job fast and finish the, the project. Usually, usually as fast as I can. I don't know. It really depends on how I feel, but most of the time, whenever a client wants to pay me, I don't know, 40, 50 hours, I can usually do, do the work in 30 to 35 hours. And that's just kind of my work ethic. I, I really don't need like the extra hours to get paid for the money. So if I can finish something as, as soon as I can, I'll just finish it. Yeah. Pedro, Tom. Hello, Tom. Uh, haven't gotten an update on your Twitter request. And I think... Hey, Bobby. Uh, so maybe I should finally edit that video that I did with Tom like last year. Oh my God, it's been over a year since I, I shot that video. Uh, I still have the video footage. I just haven't put together the, the content because I'm so lazy to edit my videos. Mm. If any of you guys are, are willing to volunteer as a really like good video editor, and you think you have the skills and the chops to do better than I do. Cause you know, my video editing is just so amazing. Uh, if you guys want to like edit some videos, maybe you can help me do it. I'm just so terrible at Premiere Pro. Sometimes I just want to kill myself. What's up brother? What's up Pedro? Tom Zion. What the hell, what the hell are you guys doing awake at this hour? Uh, greetings from Mexico. All right. In the chat, I see Idra, Indra, Jaden. In the chat, put down what time it is and whoever that wins the 
put down your your time zone and the current time. I want to see who's the, the latest. I'm going to expect like some people that are, what is it, like 10 p.m. right now? 10 p.m. on a Friday. It can't be that like late. I know if you're in China, it's probably like 2. What is it? 12, no. 2, 16 plus, was it plus 15? it probably be like 12 or 1 in the afternoon if you're in China. Joshua Ho, Mountain Time. Oh, uh, what's the subject tonight? So we have 10, 20 near San Francisco. Uh, what do I expect in the next WWDC? Um, I expect a lot of, or hopefully, this is just me, because uh a lot of you guys have been watching wwc every year right it's just it's, it, a lot of the content is just kind of dry now it's just it's not that surprising and impressive anymore unfortunately Ooh, Jaden Garrick got my first job. I uh, got my first iOS job thanks to you. I appreciate you, Jaden. Wow, congratulations, Jaden. I'm like super happy to hear that live on a live stream. I mostly get those comments like people, you know, telling me how awesome I am and how they, they learn so much on the channel and how I saved their lives. And without me, they'd be in a ditch somewhere in a, collecting, like being eaten by maggots in a trash can. And me their ultimate iOS savior has come to save the day almost the return of Jesus and that's me and I helped him get a job I obviously uh, whenever people message me I'm like super happy about how, how, how they can even listen to me for hours and hours and hours and just watch my videos and then something like productive happens out of it. Not just me blabbering on about creating this view, typing out this shit code. That's fucking horrible sometimes. Um, you know, sometimes I look back on the videos I did two, two years ago. I'm like, what the hell? What kind of code is this? Why am I writing this? Um, but I guess as long as... Uh, as long as people keep telling me that they can get a job watching me code online, that's all that matters. It doesn't matter how bad the code is, as long as it's positively affecting people out there. Uh, so who's who's that guy? <laughs> I got a job again. I already forgot your name, man. Sorry. Uh, Jaden, Jaden, Jaden is the name. Tell us what the what the job is right now that you're gonna be working at soon. Or maybe you're already working on that job. We'd be very curious to find out. Shut the fuck up, bot. Who's the bot here? I fucking hate bots. Yeah. Since we're doing a late stream, we're, we're gonna be we're gonna be dropping a lot of f bombs and shit bombs. <laughs> that doesn't make any goddamn sense though because just because it's late for me doesn't mean it's like late for you guys would it be okay if i just start swearing on all my my tutorial videos like because <laughs> the some of the videos are just so dry i don't know if i should be super opinionated or if i should give my thoughts about things because <laughs> i think the the most hotly debated topic on ios is typically the the dumbass the dumbass storyboard versus um programmatic coding question <laughs> that question is so fucking stupid uh every time i i get it i, I don't really care honestly you know, I, I just let people do whatever they do. And I, I don't really have a strong opinion about it, but it, it's just a dumb topic that I get really mad. <laughs> it's, it's like this this hot button topic on, in the community that I just find so fucking dumb. Um, uh, 
Uh, I'm so low in the frame. Someday I'm gonna get like a better camera. If someone can help me do a set design and instead of having this blank wall of just yellow white, tell me what I should put in, in the in the background of these videos. Yeah, move the chat over a little bit. I I went to Target and bought this this light over here. The let's build that out light. <laughs> I'm so cheap that I don't buy anything for my 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 video footage. You guys don't know how cheap I am. Even though I, I, I was working at a company that went IPO and got a decent amount of money for it. I'm just I'm just beyond cheap and I don't buy anything that it's not that I don't buy anything. I buy a lot of shit. Like a lot of computer shit. But anything else I just don't spend a whole lot of money on. Put Apple Pen <laughs> Apple Pen guy dancing. I don't know what exactly an Apple Pen guy is. I know what the he's an Apple and uh, 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 Apple Pen. That's so old I can't remember. What is that like from two, five, ten years ago? <laughs> uh, here the companies are using Flutter because there's a need of native iOS developers. Uh, I'm not sure if I understand. That sounds, that sounds contradictory, con contradictory, contradictory, contradicting. What's the right word? It's too late. I can't fucking talk. Uh, be like the weather app that swears and such. What the forecast? Shut the front door. Uh, I, uh, hi, Brian. I follow the way you code, UI, no story, etc. And I received good compliments in an inter in it. <laughs> okay, today's reading is just total total fail today. Uh, so, okay, so you you follow the way I code, and then you got some good compliments in an interview for doing that. Uh, we'll start my new job on June. Really thanks a lot, Brian. Love from Japan. Congratulations, dub dub dub. Why? You you got such the creative name there, dub dub dub. Why? Uh, that's great, man. Uh, let us know what position that you're going to be working at. I'm always curious. Didar. What do you guys want to talk about? How about that? Give me a topic. Give me a controversial topic that you want me to talk about. Am I using the Telegram app? To be honest, I don't even touch my phone that often. I don't know if you guys are like me, but I rarely use my phone. Even though like I'm a mobile developer, I, I don't even touch my phone that often. The thing that I really want to buy is one of those new iPads, like an iPad, uh, the iPad Pro, iPad Pro. How many fucking iPad Pros are there? There's like the other, there's the regular iPad Pro and the the real iPad Pro, the thin bezels, or is it? Uh, they call those iPad Airs now. You know, one of the dumbest things that Apple has has started is their naming schemas for their iOS devices. Like, who who thought of who thought of these names? The new iPad, I think at. Uh, at one point in time, the goddamn iPads were called the new iPad. Why did they just call these phones the new iPhone? Why did they decide to go with this dumb naming schema for the for their large iPad devices and not the phones? <laughs> Chinese music on the background makes a stream. Can you guys hear the Chinese music? How do you know it's Chinese? Are you just guessing? Racist. <laughs> uh, I love your videos. Have you, have you heard about Apple Developer Academy? Uh, I've heard like bits and pieces about Apple. Apple's like, I can't, I don't know. What is their Apple Developer Academy? Give me a link so I can check it out. I don't know if they're like, so way back in 
uh, I think June of last year. I can't remember the, the timeline of my life anymore, but last year I was interviewing for like a teaching gig at Apple. Um, and I decided not to continue on with the interview because the, the channel was busy making these, making my stupid little, uh, programming videos on YouTube were taking up too much time. <laughs> you claim the Kazan racism. Cause I was racist. Anyone that says I look like, what's his face? Andrew Yang, the presidential candidate for 2020. That's racist. Don't ever, don't you guys ever say that I look like Andrew Yang or any other Asian guy on the, on the internet. You know who else that I get a lot that, that people say I look like? The uh, the Python machine learning guy. Okay, who, who who on the chat can name who I'm talking about? I can't remember his name because I'm not a Python person. Who's that Who's that AI? The Asian AI guy that teaches at like Stanford? Uh, a lot of people tell me that. A lot of people say that I look like that guy. But... I don't know. I don't see the resemblance. What app would I be developing today? The app of just talking out loud. The app of bringing all of you fellow iOS developers in a nice little live stream and just hanging out seeing what's up <laughs> what what age did i start coding probably like 15 i'm in my mid-30s now so it's like 20 years uh, what else do i like to do besides coding i don't really like coding that much to be honest I think I've been doing this YouTube thing for way too long. I don't even know what I like anymore. Do I have any bad stories about accomplishing deadlines with clients? Um, not particularly. For the most part, like working on client projects has, has been pretty smooth for me, at least. I've heard of some bad stories. The one thing I'll say about, I guess, working for clients, some of the bad experiences that I've had is uh, typically related to clients. Now, you guys can probably agree with this as well. When you're working at a company and you're working with people that are like not coders, not programmers, and not technical at all, like let's say they're just product managers, um, trying to communicate with them and tell them, oh, this is not possible. What you're asking for, this feature that you want built out by the end of this week, uh, is not going to be possible with what we have right now. And then also telling people, like even explaining how an iPhone app is put on the internet, if they don't understand that, then just trying to talk and make sense and have a good conversation with those types of people on the team. It's, it's frustrating. It's problematic is what I'll say. Uh, do I like girls? Yep. I am a cis, cis male. Do you guys know what a cis male is? I know uh, English is probably like English might not be your native language, but a cis male, C I S M A L that that's what I am. <laughs> Maybe you guys can look that up. Will you please tell me the basic difference between awake from nib and end it with coder? Uh, I'm not Google, brother. I'm not Google, bro. Bro, I'm not Google. I should put that on a shirt. Bro, I'm not Google. That'd be a nice shirt. Uh, teach us what's app with an like animation when you drag down the table with you. 
for archive chat header. I don't use WhatsApp that I used to use it. So way back in the day, you know, when, when WhatsApp first came out, uh, I had like a couple of, I think most of my girlfriends way back then, uh, we, we all use WeChat or not WeChat, but WhatsApp and yeah, it's kind of funny during that time, like all the girls that I dated were, were using WhatsApp and ever since, uh, I think I, I stopped dating for like the longest time. I just haven't opened up what's, what's happening anymore. Maybe I should get back on that. Uh, Tatenda Kabike. Tatenda Kabike. Tatenda Kabike. Kabaka. Kabike. Uh, hey, Brian, I would like to thank you for this channel. My life has uh, changed so much. I, I recently started doing remote iOS jobs for European companies. I am based in Africa. Congratulations, man. Tatenda. Or. I think you're a man. I don't know. Congratulations, Tedenda. You deserve it. You deserve uh, everything that you work hard for. The thing I like about coders and programmers is that um, being a professional programmer requires so much discipline. It requires requires effort. It just requires like a lot of time. So whenever I find other people that like programming, um, you can appreciate their work ethic and just their dedication in being good at something that's not easy for a lot of people. Uh, Pedro says, uh, what did I expect for the last episode of Game of Thrones? Um, I haven't watched any of the episodes this season, so I can't, can't say. Am I married? Nope. I think the major reason why I can do the stuff I do for the channel is because I don't have, uh, I don't have any, any kids, no wife. And even if, if I, if I had a girlfriend right now, I would have to cut down like a lot of the YouTube stuff. Yeah. Like today I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be home. I wouldn't be home at night. The thing that's funny is like, you know, sometimes you feel, uh, sometimes when you're, when you're single, you, 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 you ask yourself, oh, why are you single? What, what are you doing? What are you doing with your life? And, you know, a lot of you single, single guys, well, the, 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 the folks out there that used to be single, right? You, you probably just still ask yourself that question. And when you're married, you probably ask yourself, you probably ask yourself like a, a different set of questions. And I guess the older you get, it might be different for everyone, but I feel like for me, sometimes I just, I just say to myself, man, if I, if I had family and if I had kids, I wouldn't be able to do this. It's a sacrifice, I think. It's a weird sacrifice for me. Uh... Is it okay to, to bump? Is it okay to bump your height on? Uh, copy means bangle. Depends. If you're a midget, if you're a midget five foot guy, then yeah, you should bump your height up. If you're a girl and you have, and if you're like short, like four foot something, you should just put your, your height with heels. I don't know. I haven't used coffee meets bagel in a while. I think dating apps is in general. So, so for me, so I'm in my mid thirties and at, at my age, I feel like I'm at the, I'm right at the border of, um, too old to really be using dating apps and like too young to totally ignore that dating apps exist. You know what I'm talking about? There's this like cutoff age. And I feel like I'm right there. Um, and, and 
I, I still feel like dating apps are kind of strange. It's it's really weird to just meet someone on Tinder and start chatting when you have nothing else in common except for the fact that you both uh, posted some photos on an app and you both swiped right and liked each other. I, I can't really, I can't find myself talking to someone uh, without any, anything, any like other uh, interest in common. It's weird. To me, it's weird. <laughs> How did you avoid horizontal scrolling line on collection view in your last video? What what horizontal scrolling line? I, I don't know what you're talking about. So here's another thing that. Uh, how should I put this? Here's another thing that I find annoying. From from comments section. He's young. Xiaowu hao, Xiaowu hao. My this is not evening. It's already 10:00 p.m. Um. The thing about comments, the thing, that, the thing about comments that's kind of annoying is when people ask me, oh, how did you do this? Or how, how did you do this? And literally the video that you just watched explains exactly how the thing was done. Mm -hmm. And something about that just, just gets me, gets my goat. I know, I know the question is, is typically, is normally like, usually this, the question is something else. Yeah. Uh, what's my typical, typical day like? Well, my typical day, I can usually speak better than this. Sorry for annoying you, Brian. Uh, no need to apologize. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm not really talking about anyone specific. I'm just talking about the comments in general. It's a, three easy words. Len Adams, I am enjoying Cordelia. Nice, nice. Uh, I plan on putting out more courses after I finish up some of the LBTA tools, uh, some of the framework associated with the code that I, I want to avoid typing out all the time for the courses. <laughs> Table view dot automatic di 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 dimension. Okay. Okay. Uh, sure, sure, sure. How to crack iOS interview. I, I find it really funny when people try to troll, troll internet, or how to, they, they tend to like put comments that are really trolly. Uh, I don't know, never really understood. Well, I find trolling really funny because I like to troll people. So when, for some reason, when people try to troll me, then it's like, it's just, uh, let's see. Have you watched a video of a English speaking guy picking up girls in China using Chinese? It is so funny. Uh, maybe. So how do you crack iOS interview? Uh, it's really easy, actually. In fact, most like programming related stuff is just, is just really easy also. Uh, so the thing about iOS interviews or just interviews, let's just talk about programming interviews in general. If if you find yourself having difficulties approaching interview, then like the, the reason for, for the reason why you're afraid of interviews is because you haven't done them enough. 
everyone was at one point pretty scared of getting into the interview rooms. So you just do them and you just fail the first five that you go to. And then you build up that confidence and you build up that, uh, that callus where it doesn't really matter if you fail another one. I can fail like 10 interviews and you know, it wouldn't really affect me all that much, at least not anymore. And you just gotta, you just gotta apply and get these questions down. Uh, the thing about interview questions, the, the programming ones is most of them are fairly similar. We're well, not similar, but there's only so much that people can ask you in, a, in an interview. And once you go through the rounds, you'll eventually get the, the same questions repeated. And then whenever that happens, uh, make sure you know the answer. I can tell you so many times where I've gotten the same answers or the same questions. And the re only reason why I'll get the offer is because I got the question. <laughs> is that I got the question like last week in a different interview and then you get the, you get the job. That's how it works. It's basically, it's a game of luck. Uh, Francisco, love your videos. Thank for putting up so much content. Yeah, there's, there's a lot more where it came from or where it's coming from. Uh, let's uh, do a little ban. Hide user on this channel. Bam. Okay. Grinding. Okay, so what else can I do today? Coding. Let's see how much Tetris I can play. I was playing Tetris like so much earlier today. How many of you guys like playing this dumb game? <laughs> this game is like, it's torture. Key pieces. Oh no. You gotta really concentrate to play this game. That was bad. That was bad. Love the content as well. Have done JSON API about to start the Firebase Instagram course. Nice. I'm glad. I'm glad to have you on on the uh, the LBTA train. Uh, Anthony Horden. Horden. Hordern. Hordern. That's a really hard last name to pronounce. Hordern. Uh, Vinish is McKagan. Uh, hello, I'm from Brazil. I studied in Apple. De what is this Apple Developer Academy that all you guys are freaking talking about? I would like to say that your channel helps a lot of people in Apple Developer Academy, really. 
Can you tell me like a specific story of how Apple Developer Academy has has used my or not used but has making use of my videos? That's funny. Oh no, these pieces go so fast. How many guys are good at this game? So here's a question that's worth asking. So I was talking to a company about, where a company was talking to me about potentially like hiring, hiring me to to do what I'm doing for them. Uh, basically making videos and being a developer evangelist. And the question is, should I actually do it? This is a, uh, I don't know if I should say the, the name of the company, but it's a, it's a giant, a gigantic company. Should I do it? It's a, it's a huge company. One of the biggest companies on, on earth. So I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> So one of the biggest companies on earth that has asked me to to do videos for them instead of doing it on my channel. What do you guys think? If I take the if I take the position then I can't be doing this YouTube stuff anymore. They might even make me sign like a a contract saying that I can't do this. Should I do it? I mean, I kind of have, I kind of have my decision made already, but I don't know. It's always interesting. What else is out there? Would you guys do it if, if you had the choice? Yeah. Be your own boss and just keep doing, keep building up your, your channel, your brand or work for one of the largest companies out there. I keep in mind, I, I haven't received anything or any, any uh, job offer or anything. I'm just talking out of my ass right now. I don't know if I would do it. I guess I should think about it more or actually give it some more thought because it is an interesting proposition. God, what am I doing? <laughs> okay, I'm just playing horrible now. Uh, no, do what I love. Your conscience will speak to you brother so you guys are saying that I should not do it I would I would do it I would take the position if I could keep doing this if I could keep doing my own YouTube channel on the on the side but I probably wouldn't be able to do it uh, for multiple reasons. Um, it just wouldn't be professional to do something on the side while working a full-time job. You gotta be a little bit more respectful for your employer. Um, but aside from that, I'm curious, like if, if the company were to offer something really compelling, I would, I think I would do it. This is just a Mac emulator. Um, 
I hate working for large companies personally. It's great if you like getting paid to do nothing. <laughs> Let's talk about that. So what do you mean? Because I have my own definition of getting paid while doing nothing at a large company. I've had that experience. At first, it's an amazing thing to be thinking that a company is literally paying you hundreds of dollars an hour for you to just sit there and do nothing. And they're, they're, they're perfectly okay with you not doing anything as well. God, I'm just bad at this game now. And uh, yeah, I've been there. I, I'm not sure if I want to do that again. But I'm also curious what working for this company would be like. I haven't ever worked at a, like a super large company like that. So I'm, I still have my, my curiosities in my back of my head that I need to f feed and try to find out what a large company like that would be like. It'd be nice. It would be very nice to just, oh no. Oh, got saved. Okay, can I get a Tetris, please? Oh no, not happening. Not, not like that, no. <laughs> oh God. Okay, I'm going to stop after I get um, 100,000, uh, 100K. I'm going to score 100K and then I'm going to stop. Are there remote jobs that pay $100 an hour? Uh, depends on depends on where you're from, really. So if you talk to American developers, then $100 an hour is like pretty common. So I currently charge $125 an hour. And uh, there's a lot of a lot of jobs that I actually turned down. Man, oh god. Uh, yeah, so there's a lot of jobs that I turned down that I don't I just don't want to do. I'm kind of lucky that I don't really need the money. Again, no kids, no family, or not no family, but no kids that I have to support. It gives me the luxury of not having to do, not having to do things that I don't want to do. Okay, I'm like serious now. You guys are distracting me. Can I please get a usable piece? Okay, this is the game. I can feel it. I can feel it. It's coming together. Okay, I didn't like that move, but it's okay. Okay, is this the gamble worth it? Yes, I got it. What, what am I doing? Oh God, that was a wasted effort. So many Z's. No, good. Could have handled that better. Okay. Moment of truth. Oh no. What the, what am I doing? I don't know what I'm doing.
Okay. 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 No, no. <laughs> when I when I play this game, I play on the keyboard, and so sometimes these, I don't know if it's the keys or if I'm just pressing the buttons wrong, but uh, the, it doesn't flip. It's really annoying. So a lot of times I just lose because the thing won't flip. One of these games. I had to bail. Is it gonna give me a line? Yes, it is. Ooh, okay. Okay, it was nice about that. Hmm. I'm just gonna keep burning until I can't burn anymore. Okay. The uh, the game's being nice for once. If you guys don't play this game, you, you don't know how like how difficult some of these moves have to be. Uh. Oh god. It's like that the stupid thing wouldn't flip. I'll blame it on the the emulator. Okay, that was uh, it's me being really bad at the game. Okay. Have I made it to the kill screen? Uh, yeah, I made it to the kill screen on, on level 19. Okay. I think my highest score was about 540. Was it like, yeah, 540 starting on level 19. Oh. This game just hurts your fingers. Cause I'm just tapping. Okay, enough of that. Enough of that. What are you guys still doing watching? <laughs> uh, is it Twitch now? Kind of. Um, you want $5 for each. I don't know what we're talking about. What do you think about Zibs? I don't know. Who cares? <laughs> so a lot of people that watch the channel are 
obviously beginners and some of these answers that I give you like who cares about zips I don't really mean it but at this point it's like asking it's like asking Michael Jordan what do you think about this this uh, this basketball that's a bad analogy uh, Liang I bell I haven't seen you in a while Liang I bell I think I think you were one of the like first 50 people on this channel on on YouTube and I remember your name because I think I remember almost everyone from the early days you know three years ago when I was kind of just struggling to pump out videos once a, a week yeah, I was having a hard time I remember just figuring out the the workflow and the cadence and the speed and how to edit, making sure that it's not a total shit show. And not saying it's not a shit show now, but back then it was a struggle. Just like anything else you do. In the very beginning, it's, it's kind of hard. Uh, do I prefer zibs or view codes? <laughs> Again, don't really care. Like, when I say don't really care is I really don't have an opinion. Uh, uh, most For most things in, in life, I'm just in the middle. You, there's pros and cons. I see, I see the both sides of the coin. And it's, it's really whatever you want to do. The thing that I will say is don't ever take a guy's word. Just because a guy's on the internet saying something, uh, you shouldn't put a ton of value behind what he's saying. Like my channel, some other guy's channel, if they're just making a claim, who cares? I think I got this comment on the, uh, the, 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 which video was it? There was a comment saying, I heard that UI stack views were very, uh, inefficient for layouts. So I shouldn't be using it. Right. That was the question, the comment or the question. And if you're just listening to some other person's like, secondhand account is that what it's called someone's uh someone's experience about how they thought something was some some way i mean you got to test it out yourself if you like it you like it if you don't you don't don't just take someone else's opinion for fact uh, even your early ones are better than 90 percent of the stuff out there thanks glenn thank you glenn that is oddly, oddly reassuring. Oddly. What does that say about the rest of the, the internet? 90% of the stuff just totally stinks. The comment that I like to read are the ones back in the early days when people used to say, I'm glad that it's, it's finally not a very strong Indian accent video. I'm not saying that those are bad. But if you're Indian and you hear other people speak uh, English, you pro you're probably very used to that accent and you probably think we sound weird. So the thing about the Indian accent, the Indian English, is that uh, everyone around the world thinks it's weird except for Indians. And uh, people think Americans speak pretty normal. It's normalized. Because, you know, it's, Hol it's Hollywood English, right? Everyone watches Hollywood videos. And so I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I'm just saying that's what people used to, used to say. I used to have these professors in my my college. Uh, not exactly computer science. I think I had like mathematics and computer science Indian instructors. They were kind of hard to understand. And I don't know why, but 
some Indians, some Indians sound American, while some Indians are totally like, you can't understand what they're saying when they're speaking English. If someone can tell me why that is, I'd be grateful to know why. Especially the U, the U classes, the university classes. What is this? Um, Tapak, hello from from UK, uh, Ukraine. Amen. Uh, what architecture do I prefer? Uh, I don't know. I don't really prefer any architecture. I just prefer what what works. Like, I'm obviously not going to use some MVVM coordinator uh, presenter pattern if I'm just building out a, a REST client, All right? So when people ask these questions, they're so broad and so ge generic. I'm trying to answer these questions will take an entire book to address. Uh, Josh Allman, unfortunately, it comes off as a, a scammer Indian accent. So, hmm, I guess I won't. Hmm, you gotta be very careful what you say on the internet, unfortunately. Uh, so, what architecture do you prefer to test? Probably MVVM. If you're, if you're talking about testing, then you would have to at least implement something um, more testable like MVVM. But if you're just building some random app, I wouldn't even care about MVC, to be honest. Uh, do I play video games? What are my hobbies? I don't have any hobbies. I used to play basketball a lot. And then my, my knees, I'm getting older. My knees are failing me. It just hurts. Do you guys do things that hurt so much that after after a certain point in time, you just can't do it anymore, even though you love doing it? I used to love going to the gym and dribbling the ball. I used to love all of it. And then over the last three years, I guess this is a combination of me just getting getting bored I love architecture discussion yeah those are good if someone can if someone could do a, a good set of iOS architecture videos I would love to I would love to hear what other people have to say uh, yeah Chrissy Bay Chrissy Bay what up thug um, Laurentia, Laurent, Laurentia, Pansira. Hey, what's up? Do you think that you need to have all the, the code tested? Really depends. You know, back in the day, we used to make apps that were never tested and they were still making like millions of dollars each, each month. So like really pulling in uh, sales and you know ten million dollars in revenue for the entire company. You know, it wasn't tested. So it really depends on like the actual business that you're you're working for. I'm not even I'm not really a strong advocate for testing either. I think that you should understand how to write tests or how to write good tests. That way you can understand how to code better. That's the biggest benefit of testing. I don't think it's, it's the actual tests that are helpful. They are, but not as helpful as learning how to, how to code in a single responsibility style. Uh, what do I think the most important thing when you want to learn iOS development? Uh, the most important thing when you're learning iOS development is 
probably is probably a combination of a lot of things. I would say, like obviously the first thing, the most important thing that you have to know how to build is a REST, is a REST client that doesn't hang when you're doing asynchronous tasks. And that's probably the most important thing you need to know how to do. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that's the most important one. Uh, React JS, React Native. I don't know. Why do people love asking these questions about native versus cross-platform? Can someone tell me what the, why people are so like obsessed over that? I think it's a, mostly a lot of the foreign, it's mostly foreign people that are so obsessed with that question. I don't know why. I suppose, I suppose here's the theory as to why foreign people, I guess a lot of Indian people are interested in that question, like React Native versus native and cross-platform. And if you work in the industry as a programmer in America, then you would mostly do things, a lot of times you would do things natively, but when you hire folks from uh, offshores, so places like India, Ukraine, Russia, then they're more skilled in React Native. So people offshores and internationally, they're more interested in this question because it's, it's it really affects their livelihood to be employed as a contractor remotely. So that that's why they're so obsessed. Uh, you'll find that people in America are not that uh, interested in this question. Does everything get boring even programming? Um, I think out of everything that I've touched, programming has been the most, no, I wouldn't say that. I would say language learning is the most interesting thing. So I mean like spoken language. If I could just do anything in the world, I would, I would go around and try to learn more um, more languages. That's the number one thing I would do. There's just something about um, when you first pick up, like I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys know multiple languages, but I picked up my, I picked up like a second language. So I picked up like Chinese when I was older and just that entire experience is, there's so much that goes into or that you get out of being able to speak another language. It's, it's like almost living a different, an entirely different life. You know what I mean? It's something that nothing else can, can uh, replace. Uh, top three. So top three languages, I'm going to think uh, spoken language. Um, I would really like to learn Japanese and I can't really say why I used to watch a lot of like anime growing up and I always wanted to learn the language. Uh, I tried to, I gave it a couple of tries. It, it didn't stick. I couldn't find that thing that would make you want to keep learning. And that's the, that's truly the, the most important thing about language learning. Uh, I guess number two, I don't really have number two. I think, I think Spanish is pretty interesting. There's a good opportunity to use it uh, in America. And I think that's about it. I would love to, to keep learning Chinese. Uh, has any Slack community that you participate? Nope. Look, there's another question. What's your opinion on React Native versus normal native development? 
because most Indian company tries to migrate developer in hybrid technology. Can you, can you tell me why that is? Like, why do, um, why do Indian companies do that? Is it because native development is, is too slow and expensive? Even though I don't think that's the case. Is it because Indian companies think that there's a larger, um, there's a larger sector to, to service if they can do both Android and iOS. So they just want to learn one language and claim to be able to build these apps for everyone. Is that why? It seems to make sense from a, a business perspective. But whether or not these crop cross-platform technologies are actually good, that's a different story. I think I think cross-platform is you can probably service most apps that are not for large companies. And there's plenty of that. So when I say large company, you think Uber, most of that app has to be native. Um, in the beginning days of your iOS apps, you have to kind of go native. And the, the main reason is since you have to deliver things super quick, um, the only way to really do that in the early days is, is native. You can't be wasting your time just going through these, these uh, cross-platform hacks. Um, at least that was true back then. I can see building out a Flutter app really quickly nowadays. Saim Ali, how are you, man? Uh, I'm great. I am great. Uh, why do you want to learn Chinese? Um, so Chinese is very, uh, it's a very fun language to learn. And I guess more importantly is because I'm my, it's the heritage, my own, my own heritage is, is Chinese. So learning that was important for me. Hmm. And the strange thing is that whenever I go to Shanghai and come back, even though it's for like three weeks, I feel, I feel differently about the language. Like it just feels, you feel more, even just visiting a country and listening to that language every day for 24 hours and seven days a week. You, you totally get a different perspective on the language. That's what I find. <laughs> Structuring data in Firestore, top level collection for messages. Uh, so I have a top level. Yes, I have. So for the Tinder Firestore course, the messages portion that I'm building out there is a top level matches collection and then inside of the matches collection is a second level messages collection that way i can keep track of everyone's messages separately uh i have a mac pro <laughs> oh my god 2011 you want to upgrade to mojave can you do it what is the budget mac i can buy for uh, I I don't want to give any advice on buying uh, MacBook machines. I just use the Hackintosh that I built for a thousand dollars. I had two of these Hackintoshes. Yeah. So by Chinese, I, I mean both actually. I really like the the I really like Mandarin and Cantonese Chinese. I have, have about, about the same interest in both and they're both really fun to learn. Uh, how's Mojave on Hackintosh? Um, am I on Mojave? Yeah, I'm on Mojave currently. I guess they're going to release, um, 
the new OS this year. I'm just gonna like, I'm gonna kill myself. I'm gonna, I'm gonna waste so much time just installing and uninstalling the new OS. Uh, when you make a course paid or not about writing stuff on DXF file. So I don't know what a DXF file is. Sinlock. So, I think I've heard of it. I don't know what it is off the top of my head. Glenn Adams, you took Mandarin for two years. Nice. Why are more higher scale countries going to WordPress? That's an interesting question. I've never heard of that. Uh, it is AutoCAD. Huh. How would you use AutoCAD for a Swift app? When I was in high school, I took AutoCAD for half a year as the high school elective. So in, uh, in America, a lot of high schools, um, the last year, your senior year, before you go to college, it's pretty much a waste of uh, a year in my opinion. And so they allow you to take like these elective classes like internet or how to make a web page, AutoCAD, uh, how to uh, how to work at a retail or not retail, but how to get a job in the real world. So we do a lot of these uh, elective classes and AutoCAD was just one of them. I liked AutoCAD. I liked it more than how to build a website because I already knew how to build a website and uh, kind of wasted the time. AutoCAD was more interesting. Can you do demo for core data in details? Uh, probably not. There's already a core data course that you can find in the description that a lot of people have took and uh, a lot of people have found it very helpful. So I will probably not do core data all that much. The thing about core data is uh, it's very fun to learn. I don't know how practical it is to use in an app. Like if you can get away with using user defaults and just storing things in a, in a flat file, I would almost recommend doing that. And, uh, but once you need to keep track of all of your objects, in a structured format, then using core data would be the way to go or something like Realm. Uh, will you make a course about writing on DXF files? So I don't know how to do that. And uh, do you know about the people impersonating you on Udemy? So I do know that Udemy has had a bunch of people on that platform claiming to be me. And I filed a lot of takedowns on, against these Udemy courses. So there's only a, there's only so much that I can do on Udemy so that they can stop pirating my content. But you know, this happens. Um, you, this happens to even the most popular things like HBO's Game of Thrones. So. I was looking up you did me stuff.
What do I think about blockchain? Uh, I'm not, I'm not really big on blockchain. When I was in, when I was in Shanghai and teaching high school students about technology and iPhone apps, there was just so much, so many projects at the end of the, the term was blockchain related. I couldn't find more than like two or three projects that were useful. So I'm not, I don't have a huge interest in blockchain. Uh, you are a great teacher. Keep always a good job, man. Uh, you helped me a lot with my application. I can tell you, God bless you. All the best, man. Thanks. Uh, teach us a little animation where you resize the table view header on dragging down. Uh, didn't I go over that on the collection view? Uh, what would you want to do with a table view? There's already a, there's already a tutorial online on how to do it. Like you just follow that online blog post and I think he even gave it all his source code. So he just downloaded the source code. There you go. What's my, what is our Instagram? Samuel Roxon, hello from China. What's your take on AI, the future of tech, and how developers can position themselves for the AI age? I there's a lot of jobs with AI that well, AI is going to take over a lot of jobs, but I can't I can't see it taking over the jobs of developers until I would say way way down the road. You uh, Damanian, you Damanian. Will I teach an in-person bootcamp again anytime soon? Uh, probably not. Probably not. So I don't do anything in person anymore. It's not that I don't I don't like doing things in person. But when you have a YouTube channel, and when you put out a twenty-minute video online, you realize how much more many more lives you can affect with just like a 10 to 20 minute video that stays on the internet forever. So that's one of the reasons why I don't do things in person because it's, it's such a huge time investment for me that it's like, it's easier to just teach things online where you can get, it's, it's just much easier and more effective. Uh, the music you are listening is in Mandarin. 对的，我正在听的音乐，就是中哎中文音乐哎中中文音乐吗？是呃国语流行歌曲。我偶尔会听国语的流行歌曲，有的时候呢，会听香港粤语。哎，香港的粤语，哎，粤语歌，哎，这个听起来很怪啊，有香港歌啦。呃，What book do you recommend for designing software architecture? I don't know. I don't. I don't read books. Thanks, Alex. I try to try this early, but does not work. <laughs> Handling two collection of views at the same time. Um, I wouldn't do that. I would not. There's really no reason to have two collection of views on the same screen. So, Pankaj Chahan. You really have to think about why you have two collection of views on a screen. I mean... I guess the App Store course has two collection views or many, many collection views. It's a different app though. Uh, are, am I up to date on Game of Thrones? No, I'm not, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay, 
I see that it's getting really late, late, <laughs> really, really late for me. Uh, currently, it is 11.35 at night. I uh, wasn't going to stay on this stream for too long. Um, it's about an hour and 20 minutes. So I'm going to check off or take off and check out. Might have some late night snack and then take a shower and go to bed. Thank you guys for uh, staying and uh, sticking around for the live stream tonight. And I'll try to do more of these uh, at a later hour so that I can catch catch up with the folks that are obviously in a different time zone, right? And I will... I will see you guys later. Any videos coming up soon? Okay, here's one last question that I'll answer. <laughs> Why not? Uh, so a lot of people have asked me this on like LinkedIn and I've been getting messages about this. And it's really what the recommendation for beginner developers in terms of my courses at uh, the website courses. So I would say that if you're a beginner, beginner, uh, don't even think about taking the courses on my website or you can take them. If you can follow the YouTube videos, then you can explore the courses. Otherwise it's, uh, the content's pretty fast and it's pretty advanced. I'm not saying they're not worth it. It's, uh, you really have to be able to follow along. And if you can't follow along, I just don't want you to be disappointed with the money that you invest. Honestly, I just hope that you get as much out of the things that you buy, uh, get as much out of it as possible. So thanks for checking out, you know, the channel and the website, and hopefully you can keep uh, supporting me with whatever I do. I do appreciate everyone that uh, has been uh, sticking with me on the ride. It's been about four years. No, it's been three and a half years. I don't know if I can do this for two more years. Hopefully I can. Hopefully hopefully I can do this for a lot longer. Uh, but like I was saying, there's a big name company that is telling me to tell me to do videos for them instead. Smash that like button. Uh yeah, maybe I should do, maybe I should just quit, quit YouTube and join the big name company. I'll tell you, it'd be a lot easier to just coast. You don't know how much I miss coasting. When you join a software company, you're just coasting. Uh, you pretty much put in like four hours of real work. On a good day, you'll put in four hours and then you're getting paid like a, a shit ton of money. I just... I just do that. Um, I just showed up. Yeah. So, uh, the biggest company on the planet. Um, whatever this big company is, they. Uh, no. Um. Yeah, it's a good company and it's totally a, a wonderful opportunity. If if I were to pursue it, uh, I'd be really lucky to even get get an offer if possible from this company. So um, me not pursuing it is something that I really have to think about. It. So yeah. Who knows? Maybe if, if I never show up for a live stream again, you guys will know why. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I will end on that note and I'll see everyone later. Bye guys.